Well, saying with this story, let's go to the United Nations and speak to Gabrielle Elizondo now. And Gabe, can you just give us a little bit of context here? Why was the UN Security Council meeting in the first place? Sure, this was a meeting that was called by Algeria, Guyana and Slovenia, three non-permanent members of the Security Council. And the meeting was to deal with two urgent matters, quite frankly. Number one is the hunger situation in Gaza, where uh, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians are going hungry and the, the humanitarian situation continues to deteriorate. The meeting was also focused as well about the threat to humanitarian workers, aid workers, uh, in recent uh, days and weeks and months, quite frankly. And they heard a briefing from a top official from the Office of the Coordination for Humanitarian Affairs, who gave a very dark uh, and, uh, uh, quite frankly, depressing view of how many Palestinians, particularly children, are going hungry because not enough aid can get in and reach them. We also heard from the top official from Save the Children, non-governmental organization who briefed the council as well, who also said uh, that uh, the time for this to end is now and that there are children in Gaza right now that are dying because of malnutrition and lack of food. So that was the bigger context of this. But of course, we have heard those very powerful words from the Palestinian ambassador, Riyad Mansour, as well as the uh, uh, Israeli ambassador, who said, and I should uh, fact check there, that Israel does not target humanitarian workers. I should actually say that uh, that's not true. There have been 220 humanitarian aid workers killed in Gaza just in the last six months. Of those, 179 being UN staff members. And Gabe, uh, earlier Antonio Guterres spoke about the major changes that uh, he believes are needed to actually protect those aid workers in Gaza. Can you just outline exactly what he said? Well, first and foremost, the Secretary General reaffirmed what he's been saying for weeks, if not months now, that an immediate uh, ceasefire is the primary thing that needs to happen in order to get aid distributed. That is number one, and he repeated that again. But beyond that, he said uh, that uh, Israel must change how it conducts its war in Gaza so humanitarians and uh, innocent civilians are not harmed, injured, or killed, as we have been seeing. He said that the time is now to, uh, uh, to silence the guns. Uh, clearly, he is, uh, 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 welcomes the news of Israel announcing that it would open the Eraz crossing for more aid to come in. But when I asked the Secretary General uh, his response to the fact that Israel is saying they're only going to open that border crossing in the north temporarily, he said he'll be watching it closely uh, but, and make uh, more comments on this in the coming days once he gets to see uh, if that is indeed true. But. Uh, clearly, the Secretary General, uh, his overall theme of his uh, remarks here outside the Security Council chambers was you got a sense that he felt that enough is enough. It's time for this conflict to end and a ceasefire to be implemented immediately. Okay, thanks for all of that, Gabe. That is Gabrielle Elizondo for us there at the United Nations. Staying with this, we're going to go to our White House correspondent, Kimberly Halkett, who joins us now from there. And uh, Kimberly, how has the, the White House reacted to Israel's admission of their so-called error? Well, the White House has taken a decidedly stronger and more uh, uh, adamant tone in terms of the behavior it's expecting from Israel in the last 24, 48 hours. You'll recall that there was a very, very tense telephone call that took place on Thursday between the Israeli Prime Minister and the uh, U.S. President Joe Biden. Well, on the heels of that, uh, what we now have is the White House saying that they are now reviewing the investigation that has been conducted by the Israelis into the deaths of those 
World Central Kitchen aid workers that uh, were killed in just recent days. Uh, and what they're doing is essentially reviewing that. But what they're also doing is rejecting the calls of the founder of the World Central Kitchen for a third party independent investigation. And that is likely to be uh, disappointed to Jose Andreas, given the fact that he has uh, really called into question whether or not Israel is capable of an independent investigation uh, because he is feeling that there needs to be a transparent investigation because often what has happened in the past is when Israel investigates itself, it often finds itself not to be culpable. So uh, what the White House is saying right now is that there are no plans for a third party investigation given the fact that they believe that uh, they want to uh, reserve judgment on the investigation conducted by Israel. They say that right now that Israel has taken steps to ensure the safety of civilians on the ground, including aid workers, and so that aid organizations can operate safely. Uh, they also say, the United States, that uh, Israel has allowed for trucks to get humanitarian aid in, up to 300 trucks daily, and they are also taking initial steps to increase humanitarian aid. So given the fact that the White House believes Israel is making steps in order to increase civilian safety and increase humanitarian aid. The White House says for now there will be no third-party investigation into the deaths of the World Central Kitchen aid workers. Okay, thanks so much, Kimberly. Kimberly Honker there uh, for us at the White House.